This is Gia Giambate. That's our magnificent house band. They're bringing it to life so that we can live a life with no strife. We can turn within where it all begins and begin to see that which we call reality. We can stop in the nowness of this moment and fly and say bye to those parts of us that don't exist in reality. Give it up for the, the young men on the keyboard and the guitar and the bass and the drums. And let us embrace ourselves in this moment. Let us come to a complete stop and wrap our arms around ourselves and begin to feel that we have emerged from the eternal as an emanation of all that the eternal is in the same way that a wave emerges from the ocean and can carries all that the ocean is, we carry all that the power and the presence and the love of God is. We lack nothing, we're missing nothing, and each wave is an individualized expression of the ocean. We are individualized expression of the power, the presence, and the love of God, and so any way that we're seeking to diminish God from expressing through us, we now let it go, we now shed it. We now allow it to be evaporated from our awareness so that we can be more of who and what we really are. We take on the vibration and the frequency of who by taking thought can add one cubit to their stature with the full awareness that everything's already been given us. We can't add anything to ourselves, but can, we can reveal what we are. As you're embracing yourself, uh, say out loud, I'm willing to reveal the excellence that I am. I am a love revolutionary. And all of this is happening right now. And that is the way that it is. Amen. So as we've entered into this vibrational and frequency of getting a sense of who and what we really are, knowing that we can't add anything to ourselves, but we can release and let go of that which is hindering the clouds, so to speak, that which is hindering the soul shine of the presence from expressing through us. We're entering into what Reverend Susie brought us into last week, which is being a true revolutionary of love, understanding that this is our, our moment. When we see the calamity and the wars and the rumors of wars and a lot of the, the hate that's moving through the climate of the human experience, we begin to realize that this is the moment of a true love, a revolutionary. Individuals that can love extraordinarily well. In, with, with all of the calamity that appears to be going on, there needs to be individuals that are rising up to meet that world of phenomena with the dynamic love ethic, not merely a sweet sentimentality, not merely an emotion, but the dynamic of love itself, God operating in our hearts, even when it is hard. I was thinking about this morning, and what came to mind was the Focalori movement that was founded in 19, I think 1942, by Shara Lubeck. And the, the Focalori movement is a dimension of the Catholic Church under the aegis of the Pope at that particular time. And it came into being uh, during World War II when Chiara was a young girl and her and her friends had gone into the shelter and, uh, to, to, to protect themselves from the bombing that was happening. And when they came out from after the bombing, buildings were destroyed, lives had been taken, individuals who had plans to go to school, go to college, get married, had babies, their lives were suddenly shattered. And she began to realize that the only antidote of this was love. That the only thing that remained after all of the destruction of man's inhumanity towards man was love. And her and her crew of teenagers began to go into the different parts of the country just offering love, just open themselves up to love until that became a, an aspect of the Catholic Church that now is in 180-something countries, and they basically develop ways of communing with individuals that are atheists, individuals that are Christian, individuals that are Muslim, to basically have a dynamic dialogue and a deep feeling, compassionate tone of how we can all live with each other. She met the war of that time, the hate and the uncivility with the dynamic of love. It was extraordinary love 
This particular time in our human history, we're all being invited to be true revolutionaries of love. And that is to rise up at this particular moment in human history and love extraordinarily. Not just people that we like, not just people that we agree with, not just people are on our side of the aisle, with the awareness that if we have fallen prone to the trending of hating and separating ourselves from others, we must become aware that we are being controlled by forces that have other agendas for us, that if anyone has fallen into the vibration of hate, they have basically diminished their connection to, the, to their real nature and being, and they are being hypnotized by the world of phenomena. They're being hypnotized by governments that move people into pseudo-patriotism, and I learn to identify themselves in more narrow and narrow and narrow ways of being, forgetting that we're all spiritual beings, all cosmic beings, all universal citizens. So we tend in spirituality to go wider rather than more narrow. If you go really, really, really narrow, then you'll separate yourself based on sexual orientation, color of skin, national origin, religion, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. As you go wider in your understanding, you realize that we're all one in the vibration of love. We're all one in the vibration of pure spirit. We're all one emanating, as I said earlier, the, from the eternal individualized expressions of the, the eternal. And this is when, when we can, like Charter Lubeck and the Focolare movement of which Agape International uh, is in that same frequency and that same vibration, seeking for each and every one of us to embrace the dynamic of love, which is the name of our community, Agape, for an extraordinary love for this time in human history. And so as I was thinking about this and I was uh, talking uh, with my daughter this week and, and we were just kind of just speaking about these kind of things and she reminded me and her and Lee reminded me that all of this stuff that we're speaking, if you can remember, uh, we were supposed to have learned all of this stuff in kindergarten. You might remember that book, Things I Learned When I Was in Kindergarten. And so I got to thinking about that and all of that is basically true. If we want to be true revolutionaries of love, Everything that we ever needed to learn, we were being taught as little kids, and then we forgot it. We learned, number one, to keep our hands to ourselves. Johnny, keep your hands to yourself. Mary, keep your hands to yourself. We learned to keep our hands to ourselves, and then we forgot it. To the point now, you have wars, nations warring against other nations, and it has been normalized. People have forgotten that they've been hypnotized into the normality of violence, the normality of wars, even jumping on sides and hating other sides and allowing governments to demonize one side versus another. That is not normal. That is a hypnotic spell by man. I don't throw women in there, even though they can sometimes hold that masculine energy. It's generally men being nuts. Generally being men uh, basically many times profiting off of war and selling arms and things of that particular nature. And so we learned as a very young age to keep our hands to ourself so that ultimately we begin to capture a vision and re-enchant our imagination with the possibility of a world that is not settling differences with war. Now, here's the metaphysical principle. If your mind can't see the possibility, you'll never take the opportunity. You'll never see the opportunity at all. You have to see the possibility of that world. You have to envision it even when it seems like so far out. Oh, human nature is so negative. Human nature is always about stealing and warring and being right. Even with all of that di dynamic moving through the consciousness of humanity, there has to be revolutionaries of love that can envision the possibility of the dynamic of harmonizing good beginning to prevail through the hearts and souls of individuals until like a dynamic tuning fork and tuning forks throughout the world People will turn their swords into plowshares and begin to study war no more, begin to study peace, begin to study mediation, begin to study cooperation, begin to study collaboration, begin to study communion with the power and the presence and the love of the infinite until there comes a Pentecostal moment where we all see 
the, the presence and the love and the power emanating everywhere throughout all of creation. Every blade of grass singing, I am. Every tree bowing to our divinity. The dirt and the ground upon which we're standing is holy because it's infused with the life of God and because we're standing there. This is the mystical quantum way of seeing reality. And if your mind can't see that possibility, then we will not create the opportunities for the emergence of the next stage of human evolution. We are to be true love revolutionaries. This is our moment, you see? We learned at a very young age to mind our own business. Now, understanding, of course, that if we're minding our own business, we don't have time to mind anybody else's business. We got so much of our own business to take care of that if we mind our own business, we can't take care of anybody else's business. We're not worried. You're not on the social media seeing what the celebrity had for dinner today and who they're going out with. You're going into your own interiority, your own inner awareness, and cultivating a consciousness of love and peace and joy and harmony and abundance and prosperity and dynamic health and dynamic creativity to emerge through you. You're minding your own business so that your life becomes a vehicle and an instrumentality through which life gets to go anew through and as you. We can't do that if we're seeking to mind other people's business. We learned all of this at a very young age. We learned that, you know, we have to speak Speak with our words. We have to speak with kind words. You know, Johnny, don't speak to Susie like that. Speak your kind words. Communicate differently. We've come to an understanding, obviously, metaphysically, that what you speak, you're speaking into existence. That, in fact, you must speak with kind words for yourself. And you must speak with kind words for other people, for whatever you're saying from your mouth, you're speaking into existence. That's a vibration that comes out of your mouth. You may think it's, it doesn't mean anything. You may think it's, it's just you just saying something that doesn't have any effect. But every be, the, because of the fact that we are vibrational beings, what we speak we're actually praying. We're actually saying, I, unconsciously, I want this to come into existence. And so when we're speaking unkindly about ourselves, unkindly about each other, we're calling that into existence. We are setting up the next round of our experience based on what's coming out of our mouth. We learned this as a very young age. Johnny, stop talking about Susie. Speak kindly with your words, please. And then we learned about sharing. Oh my God, if we could just capture this. I mean, the world is full of individuals that are living in a state of scarcity, lack, limitation that breeds gluttony and greed, domination, manipulation, control, stealing, etc. Because of the fact that they are hypnotized into a field of scarcity rather than the quantum mystical field of abundance. So instead of sharing and caring, they steal, they plunder, they hoard, they take, they exploit people all over the world. We want to share share as our, as, our, as our dominant way of being on the planet. We learn this at a very young age. Please share your toys. You might be in your terrible twos. It might be a little difficult. But as you begin to grow, you learn to share. You may remember the story of the woman that was waiting at the airport, and she uh, uh, went and bought some chocolate chip cookies, and she came back and she put the chocolate chip cookies in her purse and she got up to do something. And when she came back, the man that was sitting in that next to her was eating her cookies. And she was very upset about this. And he's just eating the cookies. So she reached in the bag and started eating her cookies very, you know, you know. And then he was eating the cookies looking at her and she was eating the cookies looking at him. And she just felt like, why is this guy going to and take my cookies? So she goes onto the plane and she's sitting next to the guy. And she goes into her purse, and there her cookies were. She'd been eating his cookies. And she was so embarrassed. She turned red, and she says, oh, my God, I didn't know. I thought you were eating my cookies. Why didn't you say anything? He said, I've always been taught that when in doubt, share. <laughs> you know, and so we want to come into that frequency of sharing. That sharing only comes from the spiritual worldview that there is enough the spiritual worldview that we're living in a dynamic of abundance and harmonizing prosperity, which may not square 
with the, with the human experience. But remember, the human experience is the outpicturing of perception and thought and what's being spoken into existence. So we actually create the experience of scarcity out of a field of abundance. That's how we misuse the law of creation. We actually create scarcity. We actually create the experience of lack and limitation. But if we step into the vibration and frequency of living to share, to circulate, our gifts, our talents, our capacities, our love, our ideas, moving into a state of collaboration, then we enter into a wider field of infinite joy. All these things we've learned when we were little kids. We just forgotten it when we got, when our mind got curated by adulthood, curated by seriousness, curated uh, by uh, other people's agendas over our own life. We became adult and serious, and we allowed for the flow of the spirit to be blocked off from our hearts and our souls. I want you to just take a breath with me at this moment. And feel into that. We keep our hands to ourselves. Feel into that. We mind our own business. We feel into that. We speak kind words. In the vibration of kind words, we learn what is called positive rumoring. There's all kinds of rumors about people all the time. But what if you practiced and developed the spiritual practice where you did positive rumors? Where you thought about somebody and said, did you hear? With all the good news that happened for so-and-so? Did you hear how so-and-so is growing and unfolding? Did you hear how so-and-so is changing and evolving? Do you hear all the good? You know, what would happen if we developed something within us sharing positive rumoring rather than the kind of rumors that go through the internet? What else did we learn when we were young? We learned the buddy system to take care of each other. This is your buddy. Make sure you walk down the line together. You take care of each other. So this is, the, the, as, as we grow into this, the buddy system is how we collaborate with each other, how we take care of each other, and we come to the, realize, come to the realization there is no other, actually, that everyone is involved in, in the buddy system, and we begin to develop a buddy system where we touch and agree with possibility that you have a buddy that you touch and agree with vision, you touch and agree with possibility, you touch and agree with potential. Complaining is laziness. That's what complaining is. People will go into complaining because they're too lazy to actually speak about vision and possibility and solutions and right action. And so the, the lazy, the lazy uh, uh, way to be in the world is to have somebody that you complain with and a little bit more a vibrational frequency in the upper room is to actually touch and agree that this is going to be all right. This is going to work out. This healing is going to happen. I was, I, was, I was just in Costa Rica, and I uh, had to go to the hospital where somebody had got severely burned. And so I, I went to uh, Liberia to visit them in the hospital. And at the time, the, uh, they were burned very, very badly. And uh, the, the, the hospital administration, the doctor said that this individual was going to have to stay in the hospital for a week minimum based on the severity of the burns. And I can remember saying, no, no, he's going to come back today. And that seemed a bit too much to even think about. So anyway, went to the hospital. We prayed. We had to, uh, two, two practitioners were there. His dad was there. And we spoke the word. And so they came, I came back to Rhythmia. And when we got back, on the way back, the hospital called and said, he's leaving the hospital now. He went into surgery. They cleaned up the wounds. And they released him. That we touched and agreed that... The healing which was already happening, that the doctors and the nurses were, were, were vehicles of wholeness, uh, vehicles of, of, of dynamic healing. And, that, and he was doing his affirmations. He was in pain, but he was saying, my body's perfect, whole, and complete. I, my body's perfect, whole, and complete. And he checked out a couple of hours later after the surgery. We were in a dynamic buddy system 
touching an agreement with possibility. And the next day when I saw him, he's walking around, and everybody that at the community started clapping when they saw him. So he, they went from, he's going to have to stay in the hospital at least a week to just a couple of hours. The buddy system, touching and agreeing, standing in a great awareness of what was possible, you see. And then we also learned as, as, as young kids to keep our space tidy, to clean up after our space, you know, take care of our own environment, you know. And, and, this, and this means many things. That means our interior environment. We meditate, we pray so that our inner environment is clean and pristine. And then it, 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 it also means that we learn to apologize. We clean up our environment. We learn to say, I'm sorry. We learn to forgive. We keep the environment clean. And of course, we've been taught for the last 2,000 years that they, and it doesn't say exactly like this, this is Michaelism, you know, that the first that can forgive and the first that can apologize are actually the most evolved, evolved people. Those that can apologize and those that can forgive are the most advanced and carry the strongest vibration on the planet. All of these particular things we learned when we were little kids, and then our mind got curated by time blindedness, uh, by the, the, the condensation of the thought of scarcity, the condensation of the thought of might makes right. This is the time for true revolutionaries of love to rise up, and then when we fall prey, to those lesser frequencies, we forgive ourselves, get back up, get back in the game, and continue to walk in the direction of what is necessary for humanity to take the next great leap into the next level of our unfolding, which are individuals that can perfectly reflect the cosmos according to our unique pattern. That is what the universe is up to. The universe is up to producing an individual that can perfectly reflect the cosmos of abundance, of beauty, of intelligence, of love, of peace, and of harmony. And within that dynamic, our needs, our legitimate needs, will be met. And so let's just go back to kindergarten together. Let's just go back to the sandbox together. Let us keep our hands to ourselves, you see. Let us, let, us, let us mind our own business. Let us speak kind thoughts. Let us share as the dominant, dominant way of being on, on, on the planet. Let's have a great buddy system. Let's touch and, and agree vibrationally with what's possible as a vision. Even, even if we can't see, now, I, I said earlier, if the mind can't see the possibility, you won't take the opportunity when it shows up. You see, let us, let us live in that dynamic. And then, like the great love revolutionaries of history, Chara Lubeck, the founder of the, the, the Focolari movement, Jesus the Christ, uh, Gautama the Buddha, Dr. Martin Luther King uh, Jr., Kwan Yen, individuals that stood so strong in the vibrational frequency of love, not sweet sentimentality, not just agreeing with people. You have to agree with everyone. We're not talking about that, but we're talking about coming into alignment with the higher frequency. You see, we will begin to be influenced by that which is in the newest sphere, by revolutionaries of love that have walked in every culture. And then we will add to that frequency. And we will speak into existence all of our needs met. We was, but not seeking to take it from someone else or steal it from someone else. We will speak into existence all of our needs being met. We will speak into existence healing and wholeness. We'll speak into existence a world that works for the highest and best of us all. We have to think along these lines. And this means that we're incrementally coming out of allowing the survival instinct. We're never going to lose that. We need that. But to be the dominant instinct, you see. The dominant instinct because curating and embracing the next stage of our evolution. And so what is health? Health is being spiritually minded. 
That's what health is. What is healing? Healing is the elimination of distractions. So if, in fact, you're spiritually minded, it's not, I'm not saying religiously minded. All religions are cool. Religions are the boat which takes you to the transcendent, okay? Spiritually minded means your dominant priority, dominant priority. And there are moments, of course, where other priorities come in. You have family, there are emergencies. But your dominant priority is how can I be the next great version of myself? How can I grow to be the next great version of myself? I am spiritually minded, and then I eliminate distractions so that healing happens. And then we begin to understand that there are narrow ways of viewing the world. Now, when you hear me say narrow, I'm not saying bad. They're not bad ways. They're just ways by which we've, we've narrowed our perception, and we think that these particular modes of being in the world are the modes that give us happiness. They're just modes of being in the world. And so we have narrow, there's, there's, there's sensuality, there's emotionalism, there's intellectualism, there's materialism, and there's personalism. Those are different modes of being in the world. There's nothing wrong with those modes. Everybody has a degree of all of them in us. However, they're narrow. If you try to extract all of your happiness from any of those particular things, you will be eating empty calories ultimately. And so ultimately, if you're spiritually minded then you get to live in all of those particular modes, but you're not trying to get your happiness from those modes. You are bringing happiness to those dynamics. And so as we're becoming spiritual revolutionaries of love, we're opening ourselves up and saying, my priority is to be spiritually minded. Now I'm available to that which has been imprinted on the mental atmosphere of the planet, and I get to curate the voice of the genuine within my own soul. <clears throat> Anchoring heaven on earth as a, a sensual, emotional, intellectual, material, personal being. That's the area of our relationships. I get to bring God to all of those particular areas. But I'm, I'm, but I'm inviting myself to be so spiritually minded that I see potential and possibility everywhere. Have a buddy. Touch and agree with possibility and potential. Share. Speak kindly. Speak in what, what you want to come into existence. Keep your hands to yourself. Mind your own business. And let us grow young together. That we can hear Jesus the Christ saying, be as a child that ye may enter into the realm of heaven. Let's all be childlike, not childish, childlike. And then we will be the personification of the miraculous, living in a zone of safety, wellness, and well-being. We'll understand that we are the light of the world. The light that lights up every individual that comes to the planet because we have shuffled off the agendas of those who would make us be small and limited. We're standing as emanations of God, universal world citizens that, yes, have distinct other identities, but the main identity My life is the life of God, not a man in the sky, but a presence that is never an absence. Oh, my God. Feel that with me today as we have gone back to kindergarten to learn and remember what our mind captured at that very young, impressionable age and then in some cases was stolen from us. The blessing, once an adult, twice a child. That's the blessing. Once an adult, you get your childlike nature back. Conscious naivete. That is, 
the things that we speak about from the spiritual level seem so naive to those who are caught up in intellectualism, materialism, caught up in it. But when you have a creative, conscious naivete about what's possible, then you'll be a revolutionary. Pulled by a vision of the possible, you'll be a revolutionary of love. Pulled by a feeling tone of what's itching to come through you. Conscious naivete about what's possible. Conscious. Mm. Mm. So I think about Lee Brown and I think about Tiffany Snow and I think about CJ's dad, Stefan, as we touched and agreed about CJ and the healing of his body temple that happened in hours in, in, instead of days. Touch and agree about the possibility. And there was a manifestation of that wellness and well-being and divine order. Let us turn within to that sweet spot within ourselves now. Let us turn within with that, into that place of dynamic goodness, that childlike nature, that conscious naivete. Regardless of what you're growing through right now, the mind may be curating a worst case scenario. The mind may be curating something that, oh my God, I hope this doesn't happen. Oh my God. But there's an order that we all depend on that we're surrounded by right now. There's a, there's a peace, there's a dynamic good. It's all around us. It's a, we're living, moving, and having our beingness in it. We are in love. We are in peace. We are in joy. We are in abundance. We are in wellness. It is in God that we live, move, and have our being. We now take our mind back. We come into this space of being born again into a higher frequency. Our second childhood. Here it is. Oh, so grateful, so thankful, so appreciative. I'm grateful, I'm thankful, I'm appreciative, I'm grateful, I'm thankful, I'm appreciative. Oh, here we hang out. The mind may be saying, what are you grateful for? You, you got this issue, you got that issue, you got this issue. You, 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 you got more issues than tissues. <laughs> but the heart and soul is saying, oh no, I got gotcha. you. You're living in me. You're living, moving, and having your beingness in the presence. In the presence, there are only solutions and answers. The divine and perfect ideal of your life hasn't been touched by time or experience. It's waiting for you to wake up to it. What are you speaking into existence? And so we speak gratitude. Even if we can't see the evidence of it yet, we just speak gratitude. It's, I'm just grateful. I'm just grateful that I can be grateful. I'm grateful for the invisible that I can't even see yet as forming itself as my next miracle. And in this consciousness of gratitude, the recognition factor is acute. I can see better. Sp my spiritual astigmatism is healed. I see God everywhere. Potential and possibilities everywhere. I feel my oneness with every beating of my heart, every breath. I feel one with God. My mind has become sane again. My mind that may have been caught up in the tumult of the world has become sane again. I'm one with God. And the word that is spoken from oneness is a vibrational frequency of high order, wholeness, wellness, well-being, divine order, divine peace, divine harmony, infinite joy, wealth, prosperity, well-being. All of this and more is being spoken into existence for each and every one of us right now. This word is serving as a law of elimination to anything whatsoever that would hinder, delay, obstruct, deny the fullness of life from moving through us. Clouds are disappearing. The sun is always shining. The clouds are just moved out of the way. Oh, the sun has been shining. It's already been shining. And now we stand out of the shade of our own doubt. 
and see like we have never seen before. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, infinite presence. Come, Buddha mind. Come. Be the activity of our individual and collective awareness. Oh, come on. Help them feel it for an instant, please. Let them feel it. Let them feel it. Let them feel it. Mm -hmm. and fathers side by side ooh, across this land and we're walking together step by step hand in hand the wonders we are just of the ember that starts a flame in our heart from the fire of creation hey, your smile I think it powers the sun When we laugh, yeah, all the universe comes in under. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, it can follow a lead, cause there's no right or wrong on this long journey home. So many unwritten destinies. We're writing it as we go, you know, in the fire of creation. We're writing it from the fire within our hearts, and it's creation. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let us borrow your consciousness for a moment standing vibrationally with the practitioners, the sacred order of this community. We invite everyone as we continue to turn within to feel the power of prayer, powerful realization of that which is so and that which is unfolding. 